right, everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. My name is Rangiori Senia, but I go by Rainy like a rainy day. And I have the pleasure of having a wonderful guest. And you all, I can tell you, we had like a pre-discussion before this. And this interview is what you need in your life. I have Mr. Maswell T. Peterson. He is not only a family man, a Navy man, and an Omega man. Ooh, okay. He is also the author of over 25 books. So, Maswell, thank you for joining me today. And I definitely appreciate your time and appreciate you for, you know, taking the opportunity to jump on this with me. So we're going to get into it. So let's start off by you just pretty much telling the audience, you know, about yourself and how you started writing. Well, like you said, you know, my name is Maswell Peterson. I look. I still claim my small city called Albany, Georgia. Most All right, Albany. <laughs> most people from Georgia always claim Atlanta, but I claim Albany, Georgia. That's four L's. It technically don't mean, <laughs> but it's four L's, Albany, Georgia. Um, I'm just a regular down there guy. And, you know, it is, it's weird because when people come to me, they, you know, they see the books on Amazon. So they're like, okay, he's unapproachable because, you know, he's had this success. You know, he's wrote movies. He's helped out on TV shows. He's done all this stuff. You know, there's no way he's going to talk to me. Yes, I will. Uh -huh. um, actually, I got my start writing um, <laughs> in the fifth grade. Remember when HBO first came out? And the HBO yes. fly through the sky. And then they go in the O and you see all the lights in the O and it. Right. I remember after my fifth grade, um, my fifth grade year, we just got back from summer. And my teacher mm -hmm. said, tell us what you did this summer. Tell us about something interesting that happened. Well, I saw my first, you know, R-rated movie on HBO. <laughs> So guess what I did? I wrote oh, about the R-rated TV show that I saw HBO. And of course, you know, back in that day, she grabbed my ear. Oh, yeah. The principal office, oh, yeah. Called my mama, got a whipping at the school. You know, my mama went home <laughs> and we'll deal with it later. But the, the funny thing happened to me on the way back to the classroom. The what teacher happened? told me, don't you ever stop writing. Wow. So even though what you wrote was wrong at your age, don't you ever stop writing. And so, you know, to this day, you know, every time I see Miss Johnson, I laugh and I smile at her. Um, she's a whole lot older now, but you know, she gets a book every time I write one as well. And um, I t at promise made, promise kept, and I told All her. Right. I would never Thank you, Miss Johnson, for pouring <laughs> into him and encouraging him. Thank you. <laughs> and so, you know, I've never, never, never stopped, and so, and it's it's so funny, man. I just, and it's like people say, you know, overnight oh, success. No, it it took a time. It took a while, actually. You know, I started back in the MySpace days, you know, and MySpace. Ooh, y'all don't, know about, don't <laughs> know about MySpace. They don't know about MySpace. I was writing under erotic name. You remember when Zane was hot, and I was yeah. writing. Under, I was on, I was writing under the pseudonym of Dark Chocolate, and so I had a private MySpace page, and nobody knew who I was and everything <laughs> else. So every Friday night, they knew at seven p.m. I was gonna release that new erotic blog. And I had the women reading the story and sharing the story and commenting on the story. And it just went crazy. Oh, and wow. it, it blew up from there. And so, you know, from there to somebody releasing all my information. I was in DeKalb County at the time when they did all that. Oh, my goodness. It, it blew up. And then, I, and then I had books under Mansfield Peterson. So nobody knew that Mansfield Peterson was dark chocolate. So oh. literally, I would see people with dark chocolate books. And I see people with Mansfield T. Peterson books. I would go to the people. That had my name on it. And I was like, when we sign that for you, you're not Mansfield Peters. Yes, I am. And I showed my ID and they like, wow, it's you. So I signed it. And you know, the fan base continued to grow over the years. And um, you know, even my wife, when she when she was my girlfriend at the time, she didn't believe her aunt told her she didn't believe me. She didn't believe her aunt. And didn't so, believe you know, it. Nope. Went to went to a little store, went to a little Walmart in Alabama because she was working at Troy University. And a fan saw me and the fan uh -huh. went nuts and crazy, started yelling and screaming. Some of her mom's one of my biggest fans, and then her mom came up to Walmart, brought all the books, and then everybody started coming. That was the day my wife actually found out I was I was an actual an author, and I was like, if you wow. go to Amazon, you know my picture's there. So it Amazon, is. <laughs> you know, Amazon built me a whole profile, and so because they said, hey, the cat's out of the bag now, so they put a whole profile up there. So you know, but that that's who I am. I'm wow. just a regular guy, man. Just and your right energy there. is just amazing. I can tell you that. So <laughs> if it's anything like like in person, like how it is, it's amazing. So oh, I, 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 I'm telling actually, you. It's actually crazier in person because um, 
I've dropped in on some live book clubs where they were actually meeting. And oh, so, you know, I, I remember going to um, what is that um, is it Cocoa Beach, Florida? They yeah. were actually having a book club meeting down there, and I knew they had like 117 members. They wow. were big, and so they were having their their monthly meeting, and so they had just read um the second part of um my original story, one last car series. Mm-hmm. And so when I walked in, I said, hey, who can tell me about this book? <laughs> and when they turned around, they was like, oh, oh, I'm like, oh, wow. Hey, y'all think y'all having a book club, man? You said open to the public. I'm part of the public. Can I join? <laughs> and so oh, I loved it. I joined in with them and we had a blast down there. I stayed under the whole weekend. And um, wow. that's when I did my first um, pajama party. And it was okay. so funny because it's like literally, you know, after COVID, we're going to do it again in Atlanta. Um, we'll literally have a pajama party. We'll get to the Marriott, <gasps> and we'll and I I bring in fifty to a hundred lucky winners, and I cater the food. I do the bar. I get a band to play. So we all just sitting there chilling, and we talking about books, and we wow. have scenarios, and people asking about characters, and you see how people get so entangled in your characters, it humbles you. Oh yeah, it really humbles you because I'm not going to spoil it for you because some people haven't read the One Last Cry series. But mm-hmm. there's there's several deaths in the One Last Cry series. Now, depending on how you read it and who you are at your life at the time, uh-huh. they're gonna affect you different ways. Oh. But there's one character that everybody gets mad about, and they're like, "Why that person?" I'm like, <laughs> "Look at what you're doing right now. That's why I killed that person. See, y'all got all up entangled in his life, and guess what? Then I killed him. Smoke mm. gone. Mm. Mm. ain't coming back. Mm. And they be like." You wrong. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so that oh I mean, wow. That, that's just how I am. And that's that's who I am. That's what I do. Um, but I've done that in Jacksonville, I've done it in Florida, I've I've done it, you know, Atlanta. Uh-huh. I've even drove drove as far as um New Orleans to surprise wow. book clubs. See, and that's I, what I'm talking about. I, yeah, but I tell the the authors, especially new ones, man, you you got you, you gotta be in one with your with your readers and you gotta surprise them sometimes. And you All right, new that, authors, you know, take it in. You know, and please stop skipping on the editors. Stop skipping on the editors. Don't get nobody from the English department to edit your book because guess mm. what? They are English majors. They are not editors. English majors, mm. editors. I'm sorry. I love y'all English majors, but y'all are not editors. Oh, wow. So your, See? Your, your book has to be edited for guess what? Content, errors, mm-hmm. line editing, and the flow of your book. English department is looking for your punctuation. Mm. See, I'm sorry. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. So now, and now you kind of hit on this a little bit. So regarding like your inspiration, I know, I know you say, you know, like your fan base uh, is definitely an inspiration for you now, but we know they can come from different sources. So what mm-hmm. would you say is your inspiration in your writing? Now, this is the part that's going to shock everybody right here. Mm hmm. 95% of my inspiration comes from music. Really? Think about my titles. One Last Cry. Oh, Coming yeah. Home. Cracks Ooh. of My Tears. You see what I'm saying? I see it now. See, now and I got a book called, you know, like I got another one that, that hasn't dropped yet called Color of Love, Doing Just Fine. Uh, I got a book inspired by Bruno Mars, um, When I Was Your Man. Um, I got a book inspired by, um, oh my God, what's the group name? But it's some. Uh, it's um, I never break your heart. I can't remember um, ooh, what's the name of the group? See now I'm about to look. I, I, I can't leave without telling you because look, I swear to drive me crazy. Um, hold on, I'm gonna tell you who it is. Just okay. Say, Backstreet Boys. I'll never break your heart. So ninety five percent comes when I listen to a song. I can I can literally sit there and listen to a song, mm-hmm. and the story starts to develop in my head. And so based you know, off the song, based wow. off the song, and so literally wow. like. You know, like Bruno Mars, um, When I Was Your Man. I'm going to mm-hmm. put that with two other books, but you got the character in there and he's actually, you know, you see him in handcuffs and he's in a, in, in, you know, even though he's in a suit, he's at a funeral. Mm. And he's singing at this funeral, but he's in handcuffs. And he's telling the girl, you know, you know, I should have I should have took you dancing. I remember how you'd like to. You know, those things bring out the inspiration for the story. So now you got a guy who fell in love with a woman, but then he didn't appreciate it. Somebody else got her. So now all of a sudden 
she has died. But the story comes in, it tells you, how did she die? What happened? Why are you in handcuffs? You know, did you kill her? Did somebody else kill her? When I uh -huh. was your name. See, now all of a sudden I took that one song and I took two others, two other songs. You know, Whitney Houston, where do broken hearts go? See, and then I Oh, I, I love I, it. So, so you take a Whitney Houston song and a Bruno Mars song, and now you got two books of a three book series. Oh, I love That's that. How you do that. See, my inspiration comes from the love of music and I turn the love of music into the love of books. And that's what I do for people. That's why they read my books. That's why people still shout my name out because you can feel that because when you go back and you hear that song, you know, where do broken hearts go? You know, mm -hmm. can they find their way home? See, all of a sudden now that heart is broken. Mm. But when I was your man, I didn't realize I was breaking your heart because a lot of people have forgotten what the true thing in life is when you're in a relationship is called romance. The right. romance doesn't start when you actually have a relationship in hand. No, the romance starts from the moment you start agreeing to say, okay, I'm going to be with you. You're going to be with me. Come on with and it. That's, that's the romance part. And a lot of people forget that part. And I tell people in year one of marriage, you got, you, you know, you, you got that adrenaline. In year yes, two, you, you got that adrenaline. But year three, that's where the Jeopardy line comes in at. Because see now, now it's something, you know, you've seen it all now. Mm -hmm. See, and then all of a sudden, all the other fish in the sea start nipping at your bait, right? Mm -hmm. See, I got a story coming about this. You know, and 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 and, 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 and it's about a female, you know, she's in a sorority. She does everything for the sorority. She does everything for the church. But then, what about your man and your child mm -hmm. at home? See, Come on. We, I write real life stuff for people. Cause I want you to feel it. Cause I want you. I don't want you to feel the pain outside of your house. Feel it in my pages. Wow. And so that's what I do. That's where the inspiration comes from. So you're talking about literally. I'm trying to push out six to eight books this year, if not more, because there's so much that I have to get out. You know. And so the fans want it. I want to give it to you guys. But I love. I just love seeing the reaction from people or the emails I get. And so yeah, it's cool. But as you can see, what I just did right there in your face. That's how you break down. Because I guarantee if you give me a song right now, I can give, I can spin you a story into a book. And that's the difference between, you know, and, and this is not ego. This is what I tell people. Sometimes you have the talent to write mm -hmm. and sometimes you have the desire to write. There is wow. a difference between having the talent to write and the desire to write. Having the desire to write means if you don't understand how to actually write a complex story or a compound mm -hmm. complex story, which means you have a story inside of a story inside of a story. Because you can't have just one bland story. Because if you just got one couple going and nothing else going in between, nobody's going to want to see what you got. You mm, got to have that, a story inside of a story. And that's how you keep them, keep them engaged throughout by in, introducing those intertwining. Yeah. Good thing. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Now, let's talk about leaving a legacy. We, we know that is usually important for most people. Right. What would you like to be known for? And what is your greatest achievement in life so far? Because I know we still got some some living in, some achievements to make, oh, yeah. but so far. Ooh, child. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> about, about this. Honestly, my legacy is about every time I drop a book, I know that my great, great, great grandchildren are going to be able to see that book. And they're going to be able to say that my great, great grandfather, he was writing all these books. A lot of people don't appreciate you when you're here. They appreciate you after you're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, we really didn't appreciate Thriller until Michael Jackson died. Mm -hmm. You know, how bad did you really appreciate Prince and Purple Rain after mm -hmm. he died? Same thing for Whitney Houston after she died. My thing is, when you look at male, black male authors, who do they talk about? See that pause you gave me right there? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to change right there. That's what I'm trying to change. That's good. Even though you have some great black male authors out there, mm -hmm. it is a female dominated industry for us. Yeah. And like right now, I'm actually tracking with a, a female author. And, you know, she works for USA Today. And she's like, How are you still in the new, and, you know, up here with me? I just released my book. Your book got released four weeks ago. And I said, Latitude, longitude. She's like, what do you mean? I said, I go as far as I got to and I go as high as I got to. Oh, I love that. Do. And so the legacy part comes in where I write my books to be easily converted into movies. Mm. And so, you know, movies or TV shows. And that's what I want to do because if I don't accomplish it, I know that somewhere down the line, 
you know, my legacy will accomplish it. You know, even though right now That's I got good. a couple of movies in place and I try to tell people, you know, you want to actually see more good stories out there? Because right now Tyler Perry just left the industry, basically. It's mm-hmm. wide open and I'm trying to take that spot. I'm not asking for it. I'm trying to take that spot. And so hey. the only way to take it is to have people go out, buy the books, buy more books and tell more friends, because then that's how you get the attention. Like right now, we got Lifetime's attention. Right now, I got I got Warner Brothers' attention. Right now, I got MGM's attention. I got Lions get attention. I didn't yeah. get that overnight. Remember, I had to wait 15 years for Tyler Perry to move. Right. He went from plays to book to my movies. I'm trying to go from books to movies. So mm-hmm. the stuff that I have, you guys will see that, but I got 10 movies that I, the books aren't even released yet. Wow. I got 10 movies that I have written that are originally mine. So my goal in life is to have three Oscars and three Golden Globes. And I tell people all the time, that's my minimum standard. Three Oscars, three Golden Globes. And that's how I want it to be. And you have to have, and I want people to, to, to really listen and think about that. Because in life, you have to have a goal. You have to have a vision in Mm -hmm. order for you to get from point A to point B. Otherwise, you'll just be living a unfulfilling, unpurposeful life. So you got to have some goals. And so Mm -hmm. I like how you say that that's just your minimum to even just get there. Because see, most people say, I just want to win. And Oscar, no, 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 no. Because if you win that Oscar, what else do you got to shoot for? No, I got two more to get. I still got work to do. And so that is why, like, right now, with what's going on, you're starting to see more and more fans, you know, mm-hmm. find about me. And so they're like, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I'm like, go go back to the beginning. You know, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where I was to where I am now. And so, that, you know, most of the big authors, the, the ones who are way bigger than me, are like, man, so you're not going to fix any other books? I said, no. And they said, mm. smart. Show the people how you've grown. Show the I people like how that. You've grown. And, and look, and you know, you know who gave that advice? Who? Grisham. Grisham. So when I tell people all the time, you never know who you're going to run across or who right. whose attention you're going to grab. You know, I remember I got a chance to meet Elon Harris. You know, you know, Atlanta has this big book thing every year, right? Mm-hmm. That big biz, a book showcase every year. And I remember my first year going, I had like three books out at a time, and they had me by the bathrooms. You know, but you knew, you know, you 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 you, you, said, <laughs> you know, you ain't getting no one in center stage, no, you know, around. So I was by the bathroom. So I'm 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 out there, I'm out there out selling people, because you know I'm gonna put my rent money and my light bill money into these books to sell. So I, can make <laughs> so I gotta sell. I mean, I got to sell because I don't pay my rent. I got nowhere to live, and you know, look, right. I, I can't be, I can't be living out in my car. So I'm out there, and I'm selling the books, and so you know, and. And I have no problem in business. I did not know who he was. Mm-hmm. I knew his name, but I didn't know his face like that. Mm-hmm. And so then I'm pushing a book to him. He said, I'll catch you when I get a bag. I said, okay, no problem. I'll set yours right here. I got a pen ready for you. I'm talking to Elon Harris. I'm like, what the? <laughs> they were like, you know who that was? I'm like, am I going to buy a book? Come on, I got to sell some more. Let's go. <laughs> so then I go back. I tell the books. He come out of the bathroom. He's like, oh, okay, give my book. So then, you know, I gave him the book and I signed it for him. I said, who are right to? He said, he just put E. Lynn down. I said, okay, E. Lynn, no problem. There you go. And I said, hold on a second. He said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm finna go read you. I'm like, oh, man, come on, dog. That ain't fair, man. Wait, wait, wait. He's like, mm-mm. About an hour later, he comes back. And I'm thinking I'm in trouble because he, 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 come, he come here with all the you know, the people from the, from the show. So I'm like, oh, right. me out. I'm like, come on, man. I'm just trying to make some money like y'all. He's like, no, we're moving you. I'm like, but I'm good. He's like, no, we're moving you. You're going, you're going closer to the center floor. Oh, oh. He said, I started reading your book. He said, you got it. Mm. I didn't know what the it was. I went at that level. He said, you got it. So I get there and I sell out. Now I sell out every book. Now I got people prepaying for books. Hey, just mail mine, just mail mine, just mail mine. Cause you know, they didn't have ebooks like they did back like, like today. Right. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm just gonna pay. They they say they say you're so good. I want all what you have here. I have people write me checks for 60, 70, 80 dollars, getting every darn thing by two, three copies. And I'm I'm going home like I've quadrupled what I originally wanted to make. And so I mail out all these books and the fan base just continued to grow, continued to grow. And then like the day he died, you know, it did hit me. Right. Because, you know, like I said, he didn't have to talk to me. 
And so that's why I'm always nice to people because, you know, Elon did not talk to me. So that's I'm, right. I'm, always, I'm always nice to people now. That's, and that's why I always give advice. Some people are like, you know, man, so read my book. And I'm like, you sure you want me to read? It? And like, what do you mean? I said, because the way I was raised in the book world, I'm going to give you an honest review. And so I've had people tell me, man, so that's trash. Start back over. You know what I do? Start back, Start over. back over. And that's so good. That, take that criticism. A lot of people are, are not willing to take it or accept it and learn from it. Right. And so, I mean, I've had, so now I have beta readers. And so I have four beta readers. And these four women, they are the death of me sometimes because I'll write a book. If I don't get three out of four, you know, you're not Motown did it back in the day. You know, uh -huh. he, like, he said, if you had a dollar, would you buy a sandwich? Did you buy a record? So when they read the book, literally when I sent it to them, I'm like, oh, Lord. So I sit back and I'm waiting. And they know I'm waiting. So <laughs> I remember when church praying, church hurricane, and this, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And so I got the first email. You about to make everybody mad. Publish it. The second book, came, second email came in. I love it. The third email came in. Oh, my God. That's all I'm going to say for you. You know what the answer is. And the form came back, you about to shake the world, this one. So that's how it goes. But I've had them actually come back split two and two on other books before. And mm. so if it's split two, two, I got to go back. Okay. I got to go back. Okay. I got to go back. If it's a tie, I'm not breaking no tie. If, right. if I don't get three out of four, then, you know, that's what it is. But even when I get three out of four, I look back, what can I tweak just a little to make it better? And so I do that. And that's my way. And I tell people, use that. But don't get your friends. Get people yeah. to be honest with you. And and so that that's what makes it different. And, you know, that's part of that legacy that I'm trying to leave to the new authors and the people who are trying to come behind me. Because I got some people behind me. They just like, I wrote this book. I said, how many rewrites did you do? And they don't understand what the word rewrite means. I'm like, baby, are you really studying this industry? So you pretty much need to have somebody cutthroat yeah, in you your corner it. that's going to give it to you real and raw. You got to, because guess what? Once you put it out there to the world, like I said, it's like a child. Once you yeah. birth that book, man, the fans can rip you a new one, boy. They, and they are not <laughs> nice. The readers are not nice. I see, man, I got one girl. She got a book out right now, and I told her rewrite it. And I told her, I said, rewrite it. Don't drop it like that. I said, plus, go back and get you another editor. I said, I'll let you use my editor. I said, and I'll pay half of the editing cost for you. Oh, wow. You, know, you have a good book, but you got some stuff you need to shore up. I said, because it's too many loose ends. I mm -hmm. said, go back, short up. I'll let, you, I'll let you use my editor because I know your money's tight. I'll pay for half of it for you. I don't want no money back. I'm, I'm trying to help you jump, start your career first. She mm -hmm. put it out there like it was. And she wants readers to rip you. Oh, no, I remember she wrote that book. Uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. Then it's a wrap. It's really a wrap. And as I tell people, it's not back when I first started, with, they will give you a second chance. Now, we just don't give you a second. If you don't have no personality, you really not sell anything. You're not yeah. gonna sell nothing. You know, you're gonna sell four or five books to your cousin, your mama and them, so your your grandma gonna have a copy and shit to my look, my baby done wrote her a book. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I got one of the only five copies she sold, baby. Yeah, she ain't sell no books though, you know. I don't know what she did wrong. I ain't gonna read it because you know it's small print. <laughs> oh yeah. I did tell you I read it well, man. <laughs> So now with that, now, so I know like you've been helping others. What would you say would be that, uh, that achievement part of it? The best achievement part so far? You know what? Tracks my tears hit number one on Amazon. Okay. I, <laughs> literally, I was sitting there. I was sleeping. I'm not going to lie to you. My phone just blown up, blown up, blown up. And I'm like, you know, there's a plaque. I have a picture of it. My wife got it framed for me. The day we hit number one you know, on the best sellers list, and then we hit number one on Amazon. And so my phone was blowing up. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Man, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Why y'all calling me? Leave me alone. And, and it was so funny. Then all of a sudden, you know, the text message started coming through. To hit that level. Yeah. To be, and, you know, to have a book that's tracking and doing that kind of stuff. But Tracks My Tears, you know, that's that's it. You know, until something tr tops Tracks My Tears, that's it, that's man. It. Because literally, when you got People from Amazon calling you and everybody else from all over. Hey, man, you know you're number one right now? And I'm like, man, come wow. on. Stop Con Congratulations on that, for man. sure. And then I, when I logged in, it was so funny. I was like, hold on, let me log back out. I got to log back <laughs> in. I know I did that wrong. So now I'm refreshing. You know, and I'm refreshing. I'm like, 
I'm number one. <laughs> so you know, I was like, that's that that's my overall blessing. See that, and that's something nobody can ever take from me. Right. And I tell people because that's so true. It's so hard to hit number one in the smaller categories. When you get to the medium categories and you go higher, you know, it's hard to accomplish. But um, I didn't let that, you know, blow my ego up though. It made me it made me work that much harder. And so, you know, yeah, I did it, but look, look watch this. Can I do it again five more times? See, that's how I challenge myself. Oh, that's good. Another goal. See that yes, always oh. did it. Always doing it. I need my so, deltas to get out there and look, I need y'all to go buy a book. And I, we got and I you. To, you know, and I try to keep it so re- it's so funny, like, and I know I keep bringing this up, but like church pain, church hurt, it's five dollars for the ebook. You know how much Amazon wanted me to charge for that book? Nine ninety five for the ebook. The paperback is twelve ninety five. They said, man, so you deserve to charge nine ninety five or higher for your ebooks. You know why I won't do it? Why? I want the person who has that five dollars on their account, the five dollars on the gift card, or if you got twenty dollars left, I don't want to take the last year of money and purchase oh, my good. book. And that's why I always keep the ebooks anywhere between three ninety five to six ninety five. I'll never go higher than six ninety five. You know, oh, wow. I did, did six ninety five on the book Snatch. Um, that's hopefully be a movie. You know, if, if everybody blesses me, go get that one. But that's about a mom who actually has her daughter kidnapped. And so when I tell you the stuff is there, man, I, I I got the movies for y'all for the next 10 years. Y'all are gonna be blown away and shocked because you know the first movie coming out is Church Pain, Church Hurt, then I'm hitting you with Snatch, and then I'm hitting you with this book called Coming Home. Coming Home was based off a song by BB Brian McKnight and Joe, I think. Okay. Look up the song. Look up the song. And then when you hear the song, you're gonna be like, man, are you serious? I'm like, yep. So you know like that, 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 that's how we do it. It's like it's it's Right now, you, it's three movies pending, and I tell everybody, you know, guys, if you want to see movies about us, for us, and written by us, and I, and I, you know, and and trust me, I got a lot. I have a ton of white fans, mm-hmm. and so they love it as well. But then I got I got a ton of people who try to come to me from the industry side, and they're like, man, so we want to do this book to a movie, but can you change this or this or that? I'm like, no. Because it's not part of what I really wrote. Now, don't get me wrong. I know some changes happen. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But when I see you trying to come behind me because you because you want the black money, but you want me to change stuff to make no, 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 it's gonna sell like it is. And I tell people all the time: if Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can do what they did, I can do it too. That's right. If, if Tyler Perry can do 12, 13, 14 movies about a man dressed as a woman. I can write my movies like I write my movies, and I'm not going to change it for you. Now, I do have in my contracts what I call um, a no dress clause and a Stanley clause. Mm-hmm. So, what they love to do is they love to take um, black men in Hollywood and they want to put you in a dress. Mm-hmm. And so, my lawyer and I, we put that in, in all my contracts that, you know, my Stanley clause for every movie that I got. And if you don't know who Stanley is, Stanley's the guy behind Marvel. He's the one that created all that stuff, he's the one that gave us Black Panther. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. He's the one that created all that. So how much how much hell did he catch for having a black superhero? Um, he had a clause. Every time they did a Marvel movie, he had a small speaking part part in the movie. So I have the same clause in my contracts now. But like I told them, I will never ever ever don't address. And they they asked me one question. They said why, and I said mm-hmm. I got two sons. Right. I got two sons, and they will never see their dad put on a dress mm-hmm. or a movie or a TV role. Mm-hmm. I spent five, ten years to get that TV and movie done, then that's what we'll do. But I'm not going to put on a dress because I got two boys I have to look out for. That's true. That's true. That is true. Now, a question for you, another one. If there is one thing you would want your readers to know about you, what would it be and why? I am probably the silliest goofiest <laughs> the joker that you will ever see um a lot of times when they see me like they, they see me they see me on the serious side on so much stuff and then until you see me in your zoom meeting or you see me pop up at your book club and then you realize you know okay man you crazy i'm like i know <laughs> now, and i tell them all the time you know you know a brother hit 49 now i don't i'm celebrating 20 years in omega sci-fi turn the corporate okay <laughs> i don't hop no more so when I go there, they play Tommy Dog, and I tell my I'm, I'm gonna give it to you in the chair. I said because guess what? I know them knees, them ankles. Look, they can't handle that no more. 
Look at watch it. My birthday, January first. Look, I'm 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 approaching fifty. And I said, I every, every time I see an old cue that go hopping and jumping, everything else, and then and then about all like he he, he he got ice on his knees and everything else. And he, I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So I've but, seen it happen I, I look, with the I'm ice. Just, I'm just I'm, I'm just silly. I'm goofy, but I'm fun to be around. Um. I enjoy life now, you know, and I enjoy life because, you know, I got sick before when I didn't know I was diabetic. Mm. And so my blood sugar went to 1200. Most fans don't even know that. And so my blood sugar went to 1200. Literally, they couldn't even get a reading on me. They had to to draw blood and test it in a different piece of equipment. And um, I don't even remember the first two days that I see you. Wow. I had two IVs in both arms. And so, um, it makes you appreciate life because mm-hmm. all my all my organs were shutting down and the doctor told my wife, well, well, we don't we can't tell you if he's gonna survive this night. It's up to him. He has to fight. And so literally for those first two days, I don't remember none of that. But I wow. remember the third day waking up and I didn't have any taste buds. You know, it was like I all I knew is I wanted to get out of the hospital. I was in an uncomfortable bed, you know, mm-hmm. I couldn't really move because I had IVs because they were trying to keep all my organs flushed and going and moving. And that's the one thing I try to tell people, enjoy life, because you're here today and you're gone, not tomorrow, but the next two hours. Absolutely. And you really don't know. So, you know, enjoy life. And that's what you're going to see about me. That's why, you know, when you do your, when y'all do your virtual book club, let me know. I I'll will. Up in there. And, and it's so funny. When I pop up, most of my tell people, I said, don't even tell them I'm coming. And then I just pop up and they, they're looking like, oh, it's you. <laughs> yeah, it's you too. How you doing? <laughs> so, um, you know, that that's just me. You know, I, I, I've, I've learned to now enjoy life to the fullest. Um, I just watched a new Tom and Jerry cartoon with my nine-year-old. Yeah. Um, I loved, I love Tots and I love singing I Got Your Wing. See, these are things that people, you don't even get until you get on a personal level. Most authors, right. they won't let you get that personal. Yeah. You know, and so that's the big difference. You know, I, you know, I tell a friend of mine all the time, get personal, let them know. Mm-hmm. And so one, one lady, she said, are you serious? You sing that song, I Got Your Wings? I'm like, yeah, they'll be up there. You don't have to worry about a thing. I got your wings. I got your hey. wings. I got your wings. And she's like, you really know that song? I'm like, you got to enjoy life. That's right. You, know, you got to get you some Hakuna Matata in your life, girl. <laughs> and so, if you're that, not enjoying life, you need to start like immediately, right you now. Have to, yeah. right now. So that that's what it is, you know. But Hakuna Matata is my catchphrase, you know. And oh, so yeah. I, I tell people all the time, you know, people get mad at me. I've gotten cursed out for it. I'm like Hakuna Matata, and they're <laughs> like, "What you said?" I said Hakuna Matata. <laughs> What a wonderful phrase. So you going to the full song? I go to the full song. They be like, they be looking like, he really just start saying Hakuna Matata, man? And it, I, believe it or not, it has diffused so many things before. Yeah. You'll be surprised because you start singing a Disney song. <laughs> it hits you. It hits you in a different way, especially if you it know does. the song. People yeah. be like, this fool singing Hakuna Matata. You got this big old cute guy. He's singing Hakuna Matata, man. Now I can't be mad at you no more. I'm like, see, right. it means no that, worries. That song just does something to people. <laughs> you mean, and, and, and that's what life is about. So it's like, you know, yeah. that's just me. But it shocks them because they're like, but aren't you a cute dog? I say, yeah, but <laughs> am I human? Again, yes. Hakuna Matata. That's it right. Means no worries for the rest of your days. <laughs> it's not problem free. Philosophy. The philosophy. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Hakuna like I, said, I love if, it. If you think this is fun, you should see it when it's live. It is even crazier <laughs> because I will actually have a microphone and Lord knows I really can't sing, but it's like I get there and I make people sing Hakuna Matata with me. Um, I did this at a corporate event one time. They, they brought me in as a motivational speaker for them. And uh-huh. so everybody's sitting there with their Nice little five hundred thousand dollar two song, <laughs> and I walked. And I took my towel off, and I made everybody. I said, "Okay, everybody, stand up. We're gonna do a quick exercise." He's like, "Okay, here we go. We knew it was coming. So I'm bored. <laughs> so I'm bored. Whatever." Else. I told the boy, "Hit it!" And we actually sang Hakuna Matata, and for the, oh, rest wow. of the rest of that day, they were all so relaxed. People started taking off the jackets. People got they start understanding that your customers 
you know, that's your lifeline. But I yeah. had to relax them. And so when I shop people, when I come in, I think something from Disney, they look at me like, we were not <laughs> expecting that. I'm like, I know. I know. And so that's what I do with people. So I do it. It's fun. And it's different. It's now, different. And now you just said something. So people not expecting stuff. Now let's talk about your current book. <laughs> Church Hurt. Church Pain, which is five star, by the way, on Amazon, you all. And uh, yeah, make sure you get your copy. So why dive into the depths of pain caused by the church, the people, and taking darker looks into the pain behind it? So let's talk a little bit more about that. I did it because too many people lying about what's going on in the church. Mm. And being real with you. Okay. And I'm I tell people all the time that people forget the church is not the building, it's the people. Right. It it's is. It's the people. And so a lot of times, like even in this book here, you see a pastor that lost his way and he forgot that. And so a lot of times people go and they and, and they're, they're especially when you move somewhere new, like you know, when I was in the Navy, I moved somewhere new and had found had new found a new church home, whatever else. Mm -hmm. And you get there and you park in the wrong park space. Oh, that's that's brother so and so park spot. I don't see no reserve time. But that's what the so see. She sit right there every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but I'm here. And I've actually had people actually come, you got to move. And um, other people have told me the same thing. But here's a stunning fact for your people who are watching this right now. There are 70 to 80 million people in this country who are dealing with church pain, church hurt. And they're good around people, whatever you want to say. And that is the funniest thing about it. People don't even realize how bad you know, church pain really is. And so you get that that church pain, you know, it, it kind of shocks you like getting punched by Mike Tyson because it really hurts you real bad. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, and you're like, well, what did I do? What, you know, how, why, what happened? And so then all of a sudden you're like, this can't be possible. So then you leave the church building that day. And then when you go home or you go out to eat, now it starts replaying in your head and you replay it and you replay it and you replay it and you replay it. That's when the hurt comes in it. Mm. Now, let me, give, let me give you an example. Um, I was at a church um, in middle Georgia. And so I was paying my tithes and offerings $300 plus every single week. And so one time Amazon messed up my payroll. So I knew they were going to fix it because they already told me they were going to fix it. They showed me the new accounting, blah, blah, blah. But I knew I had to pay my light bill and I knew mm -hmm. you know, my, my oldest son was coming at the time. And I said, I went to the church and I said, look, I need $150 to pay off my light bill and I need $75 for my child. He's coming up for this weekend. I want to, you know, hang out with him. I'll get mm -hmm. it back to you guys. You know, I pay my tithes on time every, you know, every, every week. So I'll, once they get my check fixed, I'll give you that, you know, that 225 back, whatever else. And, you know, I'll get the regular 300 as well. They sent me the nine people. Count that people. Nine wow. people. Gosh. Nine people. The church never gave me a single dime. Wow. A friend outside the church gave me the money. I wow. never went back to that church again. Wow. I never went back to the church again. Now, that doesn't mean I don't go to church now. But it took me some time to get over that hurt. See, the pain was calling nine different people. The hurt was, I know y'all should just see me on a, on a docket, $300 plus every week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you know, us as black folks, that's $1,200 plus a month. Right. Mind you, I was in charge of the boys' mentor group, so a lot of stuff was coming out of whose pocket? Yours. Pocket. You know, I'm, I'm teaching a new membership class, right? So we buy them snacks too, right? So I'm like, how you gonna? I know y'all. Oh, no, you didn't. I know y'all tripping on me. <laughs> I'm up here asking y'all yeah. for, for, for $225, you tripping? So that's where my church pain, church hurt came from. Now, as you're reading the story, same thing happens with this family. Mm. And it shocks you to the point where I challenge any reader out there. My email address is mansworldp at gmail.com. If you get to <laughs> chapter four and you read what that pastor say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And you ain't heard already. <laughs> email me. Let's talk. Okay. Let's talk. Because get what? I need you to go back and get rebaptized again. <laughs> I guarantee you, when you get to chapter four, and most people have actually emailed me and said, I didn't make it to chapter three before it hit me. Mm. And that, that's the importance of this book. But the importance of this book 
is, you know, to show hopefully people and church leadership that we got to stop this. Yeah. We got to yeah. stop this. And so you know, it goes from Catholic, Methodist, Baptist. You know, what, what really messed me up was when the seven day letter, seven day letter people, I, I mean, I can't remember, I can't pronounce their church stuff properly, but seven day letter saints. They, when I got an email from a couple of them, I, I'm, re- I'm like, huh, wait a minute, hold on now, hold on. Look, look, y'all got the what? perfect church. Wait a minute now, wait a minute now. What? But then I did get a, I did get a pastor from a Baptist church told me take that book down. You about to cause a lot of problems. <laughs> and look, what, and look, what, look, now you know, look, what, I'm still from the hood now. Look, what, <laughs> take out the 25 plus book, take out my master's degree and everything else I got. I was like, excuse me, question mark, explanation mark, question mark, explanation, sin. And I said it just like that. And he sent his phone number and he said, call me. And I told him, because you know, right there, boy, right there, look, I, <laughs> I had that Rocky theme song playing. Don't, 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 don't. Put on speaker phone. Don't, 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 don't answer phone. Don't, don't, don't. He says, hello. I said, this is man so I can help you. He says, I knew you took that the wrong way. He said, but man, that book finna hurt a lot of churches. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, oh. the truth always hurts. Mm. He said, now, I don't know how you did it <laughs> in that many pages. He said, but I'm so glad my church ain't like that. So how he many, said, tell him, so how many pages is it? 84 pages. Mm. 84 pages. And, it, and it's so funny because when people start reading, they're like, there's no way a complete story. There's no way. And I'm like, they told Walt Disney, no way. They told Sam Walton, no way. They told yep. Michael Dell, no way. They told Jeff Bezos at Amazon with that one little office when he spray painted that sign, Amazon.com on there. No way. I just showed you a way. Wow. I've written the books two, 300 pages. That book is meant to get you in there and get you out of there, but it's meant to get you to start thinking. Mm. To get you to start thinking. And I'm telling you, I took you through all the drama that family has and it's going to hit you. I mean, every... and. Go read the reviews. You'll see what I'm saying. I tell you all the time, when people are saying, wow, this hit home for me because I dealt with this, blah, 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 this is when you know you're hitting it right. And people are like, there's no way, 84 pages, no way, yes, it is. And I just did it. And so we we had an offer for the movie rights, I think week number two. And I, you know, I'm like, "Mm -mm, no. And mind you all, this just, you just put it out like February 1st, right? Yeah, February 1st, the ebook, February 2nd for the payback. And so, The movie offers are coming, and we're like, no, no. See, <laughs> my goal is to get over there to Netflix and get over there with Shonda. See, you got goals. You worry about going up to Starbucks, getting your you know, ca- caramel macchiato with extra caramel drizzle and a butter croissant. See, my goal is to get over there to Netflix with Shonda. <laughs> See, we are not the same. We are not the same. No. Mm-mm. Challenge yourself. That's good. If you, if you are an engineer, challenge yourself to be the best engineer you can be. That's good. You know, and, and, and if you're a janitor, challenge yourself to open up your own sanitation company. So guess what? Now you got four, five, six, ten buildings you're clean, and now you're leaving a legacy for your kids. So no, my goal: Netflix and Shonda. And we gonna help mm-hmm. get that too. That's how we mm-hmm. do it. <laughs> now I money. do wanna, I do wanna a little dabble into this part. So okay. So you kind of gave a little synopsis over and, you know, you mentioned about how readers are saying how it hits home. So mm-hmm. where does the healing begin after the pain, after the hurt subsides? And how does someone, you know, move on past, you know, how would you suggest someone move on past what's happened? And do you have any type of wisdom for your readers who are saying that, you know, this hit home? I need some cute juice for this part. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Um, the healing from the pain, that part is almost like you know when you ride a bicycle and you fall and you scratch your knee, mm-hmm. and then you know you get that little scab there. Sometimes you rub a little dirt on. Sometimes you don't. You just cry around, whatever. You get a band on. You're good to go. That's the easy part to get over. It's the hurt part. The part yeah. that hits, I want y'all to hit me hitting right here. It hits you in the heart. See, yeah. remember. See, you, you can hurt something physically on your body, and that heals, right? Mm-hmm, you don't mm-hmm. think about it. 
But when you're heartbroken, see, when you get your heart broken, see, that's that hurt, hurt, hurt. That's the hurt, hurt, hurt. Mm -hmm. And so now you got to deal with that part. And it might take you a year. It might take somebody else four years. It might take somebody else five years because you literally got to get over what you went through. And so when you read, like when you read what, what that family went through, you know, you're going to see some twists and turns in there. But for me personally, even my example, I'm giving fifteen hundred plus, you know, twelve hundred dollars plus, you know, the offering, the you know, the tithes, or whatever, and the offerings. It took me almost six years. Wow. See, and so I tell people, see, I come to you real. I come to you real with it because if I come to you fake, you know, the one thing about a fake thing is you're gonna see that the while, right? Yes, so you see, will. If if somebody comes to you and and, the, and they offer to sell you a, a fake Dooney and Burton, and you got a real Dooney and Burton. See, after a while, you're going to be able to say, wait, wait, why your duck look like it's smart? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, look, I'm trying to put it to what the people are right. going for the howling about. You see what I'm saying? Because the doing the first duck don't be smiling, do we? But, the, but look, but if you're doing the first smiling, and my doing the first ain't smiling, wait, and I know I pay full price, why your doing the first over there smiling, dog? Something wrong with that picture. All I'm trying oh to say, God. God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> God is trying to tell you something. You tell watch er er watch everybody gonna go Google the Dooney and Burt the. <laughs> everybody gonna go. They gonna go. Look, 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 right now they going. You Dooney and Burt. You go look at right now. He right it ain't smiling. That's right. Oh, right. I done bought enough of them for my wife. Trust me, I know. So the the healing part oh. comes from you being honest with yourself. Yeah, you know, having real people around you. Cause see, when I had my hurt, there was nobody around me. Mm. I was a divorced dad, so you know who was around me. Who was around me? And, I, and here's a funny story. Here, guess how I started the healing process? How I started the healing process? And, and it's so funny. You're gonna die laughing. Um, how? High school music. music. High school musical. Oh, wow. High school musical. My son said, Dad, I want to go see the third part of high school musical. This show you how long ago this happened now. But it show you it ain't like it happened in 1972, but it show you how long it happened. <laughs> but I was like, okay, you want to go see high school musical three? I, I ain't seen one or two. So I said, okay, how about, how about we just we go tomorrow night or we go tomorrow afternoon and watch high school musical three? And I'm gonna go buy high school musical one too. So we drove all around middle of Georgia. And we found both parts on DVD. When that's when people still buying DVDs. Went home, watched first part. I'm like, hey, better, better, hey, better, better, swing. <laughs> I'm like, all right, okay, okay. It was get my mind off of it. You know, by the time we got to part three, you know, I'm good. But the music came back into my life. Mm. See, the music healed my soul. But it wasn't the church music. It was the music that I used for inspiration for writing. So wow. that music actually started to heal me. But it took a kid to say, right, I want to see this, but then the music came. So music healed me. I don't know what's going to heal other people, but I tell people, you got to find that one thing to get your yin-yang back in place. Mm -hmm, because not, mm -hmm. not all churches are bad, not all churches are good. But find that even kill for you. And I know people say, you go to church just for the Lord. No, nah, baby. Uh, no, nah, baby. Your church home needs to be one that you feel comfortable in. Stop exactly. We go for the Lord. Um, my next church after that, they didn't have any dress code. Mm. So you could come with your jeans on, with your shirt on, whatever else. You could come, you know, dressed up in your suit if you wanted to. And they didn't treat you any other way. Now, did you and wait six you. years to go back to church or how long oh, was that? It took, no, it took me six mm -hmm. years, literally. Okay. Like I said, in year, in, in, in year number six, you know, <laughs> that's when I finally was like, okay, you know, that process was there, but I mm -hmm. still was in the middle of, you know, what, year number three or four, but the music was starting to heal the hurt. Gotcha. And so, okay. and so you, you still got, you know, it's, it's like, you know, like that child on a bicycle, you know, I'm finna go ride, even though I've fallen off and I've hurt myself, I'm finna go ride, hope I won't fall, hope I won't fall. So, you know, what I'll do, I'll do some pop-in visits at different okay. churches to get a feel. So, you know, it took me six years to get over it. Because mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. I was at this church and, you know, everybody treats me like family, I still got this thing like I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting. And that's what happens with us. If we don't understand, we're human. So we've been hurt already. So now it's like we're waiting for that. And like, like when a woman gets her heart broken, 
She's like, hmm, okay, okay. Mm. Let me go and bust. Look, why? Look, look, why? Let me go and pull y'all shirt up for a second. Mm. Oh mm. man, dog. Mm -mm. No, nah, you just like the last one. No. Nope. Mm -mm. mm -mm. Where you work at? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What your credit is for? Mm -mm. What your house? Oh, you got apartment. Mm -mm. So you got apartment, but you got a, but you got an S class, huh? Okay, that doesn't sound right, baby. Something wrong with that. See, that's how y'all do. Y'all break a brother down quick. And I did not realize this until I became popular that. I had women used to always look at my shoes and then say, what time is it? And they look at my watch. And so one guy told me, he says, uh, he says, you know, your watch should always be on your right arm. That way, when you flex it out, you pull back and you see it right there. He said, your watch should be on the opposite end, outside of your of your wedding hand. I said, well, I don't have a wedding hand. He's like, I'm not mad. He said, either way, still put your watch on the right side. So mm. I used to have women come to me when I was going to watch the left side. They would look at me. They'd always grab my right arm. I never knew why. Now I knew why. Etiquette. You learn something. So mm. then when I start realizing they look at your shoes to see how worn are your shoes. See, that's how you have to shape your life. So as I start to heal, guess what? I started to make sure that my shoes were better. I started making sure that when I pop my arm off of that watch, there it is right there. See, just like right now, you know, brother came with a little white trick. You see okay. what I mean? See okay. what I you, you can't come wrinkle. You can't come wrinkle. <laughs> now my wife, she's an AK. And I it was so funny when I first met her, everybody's like, mm-mm, you ain't gonna be you ain't pulling her, you ain't pulling her. <laughs> what? I got <some> game. <laughs> I got more game than Parker Brothers. You done lost your mind, boy. <laughs> now, when I first went to it, I said, you know, would you would you like to go get a cup of coffee? This thing flipped out her calendar. And I said, oh, my. No, I said, no, you didn't open your calendar <laughs> for a cup of coffee. Now, mind you, I had been coaching at the Y, and her nephew had playing basketball at the Y, so I coached against her. Nephew several times, uh -huh. and so you know, and um, I knew of her, and we ran to each other at the college, you know, a couple times. But I'm like, I'm trying to get you to go out with me for a cup of coffee. She opens up her calendar. <laughs> Who does that? A but business I woman. Realize, but guess what? <laughs> I had to realize something as I was progressing and moving up in life. Uh -huh. So were the people around me. So guess what? You can't ride Luwate, Luwate in that Geo Metro. <laughs> Not the Metro. Luwate, and try to get you a Honda woman. See, you, you, got, you, you got to match them levels. Like, I have a master's degree, and I have several um, college credits at the doctoral level. She has a doctoral degree. See, well, we can talk on that mm -hmm. same level. So, see, the communication part is clearly there because, you know, as an expert in criminal justice, like she's an expert in criminal justice. See, ooh, you can imagine the conversation we have. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. You know, I tell my boys all the time, if you're going to go out the woman, match her. Mm -hmm. That's all they're looking for. I said, you're thinking they're being difficult. Match her. So, of course, it took her two weeks to finally agree to a date with me because she said, my camera's full. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, man, it's well, bitch, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Strong with two. I'm like, you get you crazy. <laughs> and then it was it was so funny. The day before we actually went out, um, she added me on Facebook. And um, and I was like, so you know, I'd be cool with it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna accept it about 20 minutes later. I ain't gonna accept it right away. I'm gonna like, wait. I'm gonna be I'm play this cool. So I'm up there. <laughs> so I accepted it. And then, you know, that's when they had the light on. So you can tell when everybody be on Facebook at the time. Right. So we, we started chatting. We would be chatting sometime at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Instead of talking on the phone, and I said, why don't you just give me your phone and let me call you? And she was saying no. Ooh. And so one day she actually gave me the phone number. And so ever since that day, we've been together and we've been laughing and joking. And um, I tell people, man, you got to prove your game. You oh, know, yeah. You know, and guys are getting mad about it. But, I mean, you got to improve your game. You know, you, you, you can't go to a woman here and you look, look, and, and you, you sit with your mama. Don't, don't, and please stop. Guys, do me, guys, if y'all listen, do me a favor. Stop telling these women, my mama stay with me, you know, you know. No, you stay with your mama. No, you stay with your mama. Tell your mama don't stay with you. The devil. <laughs> see, I'm gonna bring it to you real. See, when I man, when I do these dating seminars, boy, I'll be killing with it. So they be like, dude, you ain't got stuff on toes. I'm like, get your own place. A man that does not have his own place to lay his head when he's dating you women, 
hmm. will become a dependent and you cannot yeah. file taxes for him. Yeah, I listen to that. I'm trying to tell you something. Coming from a man. If listen. He does not have his own place to lay his head. Now, mind you, if he got his own place to lay his head, baby, I don't care if he got an air mattress, a microwave, and a TV, but he got his own place. That's He's right. showing you I'm making moves. Because I'm telling you, I guarantee right now, there was a woman that I wanted to date when I first started, you know, writing big time before I met mm -hmm. my wife. And she was like, mm -mm, you're, you're not what I want. And it was so funny when I got invited to her, her corporate and I didn't know she worked there. Mm -hmm. And so she, she was like, Oh, so, so, so you finally made it big with your writing and everything you want to go. And I said, yeah, I finally made it to oh. the writing part. I said, yeah, you know, they paying me $7,500 to come and talk to y'all today. I'm doing mm -hmm. all right. And she's like, Here's my number. Give me a call. I said, ooh, I'm sorry. Dating somebody. And you know what? Mm. I'm trying to kick it with her. So if I take that call, guess what? I'm giving you the impression that, you know, something might happen. Right, And then right. that kind of messes up my thing right there. Because if you see her again, something y'all can get catty. But don't forget to call me. I gave my number. So see, I never give you a chance to do that. That's why mm -hmm. I got to protect the woman you with. And you show everybody, hey, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not stepping out. I'm not stepping out. Yeah, I fellas, listen to this. Y'all need to see That's when the next uh, relationship advice seminar is going to happen. Mean, I'll be trying. <laughs> look, we, look, I'm going to have you put one together at Atlanta. <laughs> and, and you'll be surprised how many people will jump in on that one because when I I'm, when I wrote the book, um, Am I a Proud in Your Life for an Option? That was one of the first books I ever wrote. And that dealt with dating relationships. And so I'm redoing that book right now. But um, mm -mm. I got I got homeboys who are divorced. I got homeboys who I've helped save their marriages. Um, and so the ones who have helped save marriage are like, man, how did you pick about his knowledge? And I told him one thing. I remember as a romance writer, I studied mm. females. Mm. And he's like, so you went to the lot? No, no, no. I went to the mall. Mm. And I would actually walk behind some couples, especially the couples who were holding hands, mm -hmm. and especially the couples who weren't holding hands. Now, oh, sometimes you think that the couple holding hands, that they're really good, right? And they're mm -hmm. really not because that's what they're putting out to America. Sometimes the couples who are not holding hands, they got the best relationship in the world. Right. It's not that's what good. you see on the outside. It's you got to take it to the inside. And so the more I start diving into that, mm -hmm. that's how I found out more about the, the female psyche and how what not to do. That's why I got my wife. Can I tell people, go to my page page. Look at my wife. Take a you see, I'm married up. <laughs> I'm married up. And that's and it's I tell guys, if you want to marry up, show your potential. Yeah. You show a woman potential, boy. Mm. Mm. That's I'm all we want to see, fellas. That's all. Potential. That's all. Look, you ain't got to be there yet. Show the potential. But guess what? But have a game plan. Right. Have a game plan. My game plan was to become the most sought after author. In the United States of America. And so here I am years later when she first found out. I mean, because we've been married, what, 11 years now? Mm -hmm. Been together 12. And um, so, mind you, I, I already had the, the initial jump start mm -hmm. and she didn't even see it. And so now when the book comes out, she get more emails about the books than I do. <laughs> they be like, wait, they be like, hey, girl, go order my copy. I know y'all doing a book order. Put my copy in there. <laughs> open the cash app. You open the cash app. You. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Tell them to talk to me. I'm the one who wrote the book. I want to talk to people too. Every time I come to the kitchen, y'all in the kitchen, eating all the hog moths. I like talking to them when really too. But literally, oh I mean, God. they don't really, I mean, and it's, and it's so weird because I'm like, they don't even realize how approachable I am. Right. And then I, what I do is I'm like, I'll call, like, I, I'll tell a fan that, that sent me an email. I was like, here, give me a call on this number right here. Now I have a separate phone. Mm hmm. Just for my just for my fans to call. Oh, like this, this, oh. This, so they can actually call this phone right here and uh -huh. they'll reach me. And it's so funny. They be like, hello. I'm like, hey, this man. So people are like, how do I know it's you? I turn it down. Look, watch it. Mm, FaceTime, boom. Hey, <laughs> what's up? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Go to Amazon. Look at the picture. See my face? Amazon, my face. See? That is me. Hey, boo boo. I'm right here, boo. But, you know, I you love know, it. When when they do that, they like, oh my god, I'm really talking to you. I'm like, yeah, you talking to me? How you doing? <laughs> and it's like, what? It's like, man, what's going on? Then I got them crazy fans like, man, what's going on? You know the shocking part about it, though? 
<laughs> is that more husbands and boyfriends now are reading the books with their female friends. And so like I had just oh. one, I had this one husband and wife. Um, I didn't realize, you know, like I said, they were on a drive back from Philly going down to Florida, whatever else. And so they were taking turns driving. Mm-hmm. And so they were reading the book. So they were taking turns reading the book while they were driving. And then he was like, man, that book was old before we knew it. We had to go get another book to read. <laughs> and I was like, like, why? He was like, yeah, man. He said, but I'm going to tell you, he said, what you did for that 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 child, man, that was wrong, man. He said, as a parent, I can't see my child. And so you find the guys that women, if you encourage them to read, they will read. Mm-hmm. Don't and don't you can't just down on you need to read more about it. you you need you need uh-uh, just say baby I got let me read I gotta read you two paragraphs you start reading two or three paragraphs he, in the it's mind a he, he gonna want to know what's going next yeah now mind you if he's not on that same level with you mm-hmm. no man I just want this my rap music blah 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 I'm not saying he ain't the one for you but I'm like hold on a second you know <laughs> reading is fundamental and you know schoolhouse rock told us you know <laughs> Junction, Junction, what's, what's your function? Looking up very <laughs> free. If you start to read and he don't want to read with you at all, never ever. Yeah. You might want to look at that before you say I do now. I'm just saying. Good look. Something to think about, lady. Uh, and, and I only tell people this because remember, you want someone that, that's there with you, yin and yang. Yeah. You don't want to. You can't find a woman with a master's degree with a, with an eighth grade dropout, you know. And I, I'm not I'm not, I'm not dogging the eighth grade dropout. What I'm saying is, if you got that master's degree, he got the eighth grade dropout. Encourage him to get the GED. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. encourage him to get a technical degree. Mm-hmm. Then encourage him to get an associate degree. See, now you're building him up. Oh and yeah. What? See, now y'all together. Same thing for the guys. Just because you know she got those kids, and or or, or she might not have the same education you got, mm-hmm. build her up mm-hmm. because you know a heart is a heart <laughs> of love, and I learned. <laughs> Come you, on, if, my if, heart if, 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 look, watch it. If you think this is fun, wait, you see me in live, man. It is so crazy because I have stuff set up already, man. And people be like, dang, boy, how do you come? I'm like, man, it comes from here and it comes from the gut. But yeah. you yeah, that's how you build a house up, though. Seriously, because I got a master, my wife got a doctorate degree, and I joke and I said, Dr. Peterson, you're speaking in Ebonics. Please speak to me on your education <laughs> level. All right, now you sound like my husband. And so, and okay, that, I we, like, we hey, got your wife and I on the same page. Just because we got this doctorate, don't mean we can't be on all these other levels. And get what? And look, oh, I look. And let me get, let me get proof ready. And I don't mind you getting on that level sometimes, but get what? There are times I need you to pronunciate and enunciate your words. And somebody told me one day, somebody said, I said, what now? I said, pronunciate and enunciate. That means talk properly. Use your tongue. Let your tongue roll with your arms. Like, like my girl, um, Carter B was like, oh, okay. roll your tongue when you're supposed to roll your tongue. Sucker. Oh, so, do you get the side eye from your wife after you say that? Yeah. Oh, if you okay. look at me and I'm like, okay now. <laughs> but but here's the funny thing I right, done. We got a child that has a chemistry degree. Mm. Black male with a chemistry degree. Now, my youngest child, he'll tell you already, I'm gonna be a Q. If he was here right <laughs> now, he come in, he come in and he'll tell you Q side, <laughs> Q, nine years old. He already knows he's gonna be a Q. But he wants to be a veterinarian too, right? I said, do it. Yeah. So what I do, what's hoping I do, I play Tennessee's on um, um, Tuskegee's ball and parlay for him all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And so, see, in his mind, he understands mm-hmm. Tuskegee is where I need to go to get that degree at. My my brother went to college school. I got to go to college. This way you're going to go. This way I want you to go. I want you to get that HBCU experience. Oh, yeah. So I oh, played yeah. ball and parlay for him. And he's like, and he loves it. So he, what's school? I said, it's over in Alabama. Why well, take you over there? We're going to see it one day, okay? So I played the ball and parlay for him. Now, I use his love of music mm-hmm. to show him the school. Oh, that's and good. And we push me show. Now, this is the academic part that you can get from. That's good. You know, a lot of cues don't understand how to how 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 to get that message across to their children. So I use his love of music. Like, remember drumline, mm-hmm. the graduation scene, and mm-hmm. he and and he's like, and but he knew he was going to graduate. You can't do nothing to me. Right. That's why, that's why I want I mean to be at. Once you get that education, that degree on that wall. 
they can't ever take it from you. Ever. Ever. Like I tell them all the time, I can go back to any school, anywhere, anytime, because guess what? I got 20 years of law enforcement. 20. Wow. I can teach Homeland Security, criminal justice. I told I told one professor at an interview, I told him, I said, I forgot more than you learned. And he looked at me because I was this black man interviewing at the PWI. And he said, are you sure? I said, oh, let's break it down. <laughs> name the case, name the court, let's go. After two hours, you know what he told me? He said, I think we might have found a person for this job. I was the first black male to lead Darden State College in Albany, Georgia's criminal justice department. Wow. Congratulations on that. Sure did. Wow. And like I said, I left them after, you know, I started making more money with books, but I got tired of actually registration. I ain't gonna lie to you. I got tired. <laughs> I, look, because my I took that department from number eight to number two. Wow. And so I had over 170 some odd students. <laughs> so it's like you can imagine trying to register 170 some odd students. Man, oh yeah. It wasn't no bathroom break. It wasn't nothing. So I was like, okay, it's cool. Whatever. I said, it's time for me to go. Yeah, I gotta go. So you just have to enjoy life, man. So I have the experiences on different things, but it's cool. Yeah. Now speaking of these experiences on different things, I want to change it up a little bit from the author. And let's talk about regarding your bid for the Secretary of the State um position. What led up to that decision? Like you've been very uh successful, you know, writing books, you have your history at Darton, doing different things, you got your um your uh military background. What 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 led up to this decision? I got tired of seeing people fake the rules. Oh the Secretary of State is, is the face of Georgia when it comes to new businesses. The mm-hmm. Secretary of State is the face of elections. The Secretary of State is the face of mm-hmm. non-licensing. And mm-hmm. so I got tired of people always putting red tape in front of us. And I say us, and I told one lady this, and it shocked her. I said, the us includes Democrats and Republicans. See, because you broke Republicans, y'all just talk as bad as we are. Mm-hmm. I want to be a Secretary of State for Georgia. And that's, how, that, and that's the campaign slogan for a better Georgia. You know, when I wanted to get my business stuff done, you guys took me through hell to get it. You guys said, go to the website. The website is not user friendly. If you're going to have a website, make sure it's user friendly so people can find what they got to find fast and easy. But on top of that, I said, you need to have a Chick-fil-A service because you're the ones dealing with all the nonprofits, all the LLCs, all the corporations, everything that comes through, everybody going through the licenses. I said, make it easier. I said, Already, the state of Georgia is not what they call a veteran-friendly state. I said, so what? I have an initiative I want to do called VETCO. VETCO is set up for veterans and military personnel as they're exiting the military. Take your skills you got. We're going to set you up so we can help you do all the paperwork to open up your own business. And then we're going to get with the Labor Commission and try to partner you with bigger companies so they can actually put out some business to you as well to make you successful. We all still be love the veterans. Then it's time to show it. It's time to show it. Nobody's doing anything. Nobody wants to collaborate. The Labor sec- Labor Secretary um, uh, and the Commissioner, they, nobody wants to collaborate at all. Mm. So the Labor Commissioner in Georgia and, and Secretary of State should be collaborating to make this a more better and friendly state. And that's what I'm going to do. But that's why I ran, because I, I get tired of people always saying, we support the troops. We support veterans. But you know what? Yeah. I was a troop. I was a police officer. You're not supporting nobody. So I always, and I, I had to use my own words on me. Mm-hmm. If you want something better, sometimes you got to do it. Yeah. And so when I decided to float the idea, you know, they came and they said, man, so they're going to come at you. I said, well, okay, come at me. So I had my own team do the research on me first, right? Because, you know, you got to make sure you ain't got nothing, nothing. Right. And so they came back, you know, I want you to listen to these facts. I'm a black man. Mm-hmm. with a master's degree. I have not had a speeding ticket, moving violation, anything in 33 years. No tickets in 33 years. I better. Police officer, college professor, the experiences and the stuff that I've learned from multiple entities mm-hmm. has set me up this position right here because the Secretary of State is full of different entities. Right. The military taught me strength in stressful times. The, mil- the police department taught me how to handle stressful situations, not how, not how to overreact. 
the college world taught me sometimes you're the teacher and sometimes you're the student. So just because I get in the secretary said office, that don't mean I know everything and I'm still willing to learn from some other people. Oh, I love it. So the people who are there right now, they don't want to listen because you feel like you're there. You feel like you're solid. So I t- like I tell people, my first thing I'm going to do is get rid of about 25% of the people who are there because you were hired because your mama or your auntie or your sister or somebody knew somebody. You're not going to work for somebody. I'm bringing the Chick-fil-A service to to the Secretary of State office. And if you do not want to uh, move, then you don't have to move. I said, but I'm going to give you two things about me that you need to know. And you're going to hear this on the campaign trail. I don't dance unless I hear music. I don't flash my head unless it itches. I'm not here to play games with you. Now, just like I can have that. Uh, Here's my serious side. That office is, is, is so important to the state. To the state of Georgia, it is so important. But see, right now, as Georgia goes, now the country goes. Right. And we got to flip Georgia blue on the inside. Right. I can't be concerned about what Stacey's doing right now. Stacey's running for governor. I'm running for secretary of state. We will all collaborate at the right at the respective time. Mm-hmm. But I'm building my team as well because I know what I'm up against. Part of that legacy, see, I want to let the little black boys and little girls in Georgia know, hey, I can be secretary of state too. That's right. So that's that right. is what I'm doing. Oh, I love it. And I got one final thing. So what words of encouragement do you have for either your readers? Um, you talked a little bit already about those who are interested or, or want to become writers, but as well mm-hmm. as any type of encouraging words for someone that may be interested and in also uh, starting a bid for a position. Any of those, any type of words of encouragement mm-hmm. in general? The first thing you got to do, know who you are. Know you listen to day. Day will always come up. You know that? And mm-hmm. I swear, day, let me say it right, day. What do you know? They said, they said, they said. No, nah, partner, what did you say when they said what they said to you about me? See, mm-hmm. that's how you check people. See, they can say it all they want to. I'll let the voters choose. The voters going to say, we want man so peace. No, we don't want man so peace. Right. They said, will keep you from doing everything in life you wanted to. They said college too hard. They said taking an exam is too hard. They said starting a business too hard. Stop listening to they. They. Because Mm, you can That's good, y'all. Nobody can show me a picture of they. That's right. Now look, let me get ghetto. They. (laughs) Who is they? They ain't got no last name. They ain't got no address, no nothing, but they just they. They. That's, That's true. So don't <laughs> listen to day. Do what you gotta do. Never be afraid, and do it that way, and you'll be all right. But don't listen to day. <laughs> well, how can they get into get in contact with you on social media, or better yet, how can they purchase a book? <laughs> okay, now they, them, those, <laughs> us. Get what y'all get that. You can actually find all my books on Amazon.com. Look me up on the Mansfield T. Peterson or Mansfield Peterson. It was so funny because I went through this thing while I was I was about to go to a singular name, literally, as well. And the Amazon's like, you know you're at that point you can't. No, I'm going to say Mansfield T. Peterson on Amazon. You want to find me on social media, man. It, I'm still on the Mansfield T. Peterson. Don't add my son. He the broken. You're going to see hit both names pop up. Mansfield <laughs> Peterson. Wait the broken. No, no, his name is Mansfield Peterson the second. That's the broke one. He ain't got no money. So don't be adding him. He can't write no books. He chemistry. So add Mansfield C. Peterson. If you click on the profile, you'll see it. My my picture in the background has all the book covers, some of the book covers okay. back there. Add me there. You know, same thing on Instagram, same thing on Twitter. Um, and trust me, when you see me, sometimes you'll see me telling people off, because guess what? I don't sugarcoat nothing for people. I will call our Democrats, I will call our Republicans. That is why we are having the success we're having right now. See, if you're wrong, you're a Democrat, you think I'm going to let you slide. No. Mm. No. See, I'm for the people. And that's the difference. So you can find me there. If you want to find my my election page, it's on social media. It's on Facebook. Elect Mansfield Secretary of State. You can look me up. You can find me there. You know, if if you're having a hard time finding me, send me an email at Mansfield P. That's M-A-N-S-W-E-L-L-P 
at gmail.com. I will guide you to where I'm at so you can find me, so you can laugh with me, because you never know what silly joke I'm going to post on social media. <laughs> Because I just joked about my neighbors walking in the rain. I told them the rain was coming, and they didn't believe me. And then all of a sudden, it rained on their head like in color purple. <laughs> and they outside, they laughed. See, that's the kind of stuff y'all don't get from on social media. You're going to get the real me. So, you know, hey, find me, add me, follow me, do what you got to do. And I'll make sure I include all of your information um, in, in the link and everything with this as well, too. So, so they'll be able to get in contact with you. <laughs> ooh, 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 do that. And look, and then make, make math, matter of fact, when you get off the phone, Miss Delta, you need to hit me up. Feel it Absolutely. Right Feel it. I got to talk about some cute Delta stuff <laughs> online. See, all oh, y'all can't hear that. See, 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 that's that Coleman love. See, y'all ain't got that. Now. You got it. Y'all ain't Absolutely. Got, see, y'all, y'all part of the day right now. See, this Coleman love. Here. Y'all part of the day. So, no, y'all can't hear that. Mm-mm. Well, <laughs> look, you all, since we got business to do, we're about to get ready to end this interview. But again, thank you so much, man, as well, for sharing mm-hmm. your knowledge, your experience. And I'm telling you all, um, if you have not purchased the books, make sure you go on and do it. I've kind of like started l- looking at the snippets and the reviews again. <laughs> church hurt, church pain has already at five stars on Amazon. Uh, the reviews are uh, great. So get your books today. I am actually ready to start my book club with my homegirls. Now, you know, <laughs> school is officially done. We're about to get better, get ready to get back on our reading spree. So you all do the same thing. So until next time, enjoy the rest of your, your day, your time, and make sure you get your goals together. You heard it from the man himself. Get you some goals. Let's do, let's make 2021 very successful. So enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.